In recent years, Poland has emerged as one of Israel's strongest supporters in Europe. But that alliance has been tested by what many in Israel and the Jewish world see as its government's efforts to suppress any narratives of Polish complicity in the Holocaust. And now further strained by a proposed law putting a 30-year limit on any outstanding claims for the restitution of Jewish property seized during the Holocaust. Well, last week, Israel's foreign ministry reprimanded Israel, Poland's ambassador to Israel over that legislation. And earlier today, the ambassador joined me to address the issue. Ambassador Mark Magyarowski, thank you for joining us on I-24 News. Thank you for having me. Now, Israeli Foreign Minister Yair Lapid used particularly harsh language against this law that's moving through the Polish parliament that would set a 30-year time limit on the appeal of administrative decisions on returning property that was confiscated during the Second World War. He called it immoral. I should note the U.S. State Department called it a step in the wrong direction. What's your response to that? Admittedly, it's a very complex issue, but I have to stress very clearly what I said a few days ago on a radio talk show. I have the impression that very few Israeli commentators, experts and historians have actually bothered to read the text of that legislation and to become familiar with its uh, content. And also the historical and uh, social context of uh, this procedure. First of all, I can't agree with those, uh, with many remarks that I have heard over the last few days here in Israel that uh, we have uh, completely erased the possibility of uh, applying for compensation for the property lost during the war and after the war on the communist regime in Poland. Uh, what changes is the method. Until now, as you correctly mentioned, uh, the administrative decisions were taken by local authorities and claimants could uh, file their, uh, their uh, suits through local authorities. Now, every claimant can file a civil lawsuit in a, in a civil uh, court. It will be a fair procedure. So we have not closed the door to potential compensation. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you did mention the fact that uh, there was a, the first vote in the Polish parliament, 309 votes um, in favor of the legislation, 120 abstentions, and not a single vote against. Uh, this has its political weight. It has its political significance. All political parties uh, are supporting this uh, uh, legislation, with some doubts, of course, and uh, some reservations. And also, I would like to say very clearly that this uh, legislation, this uh, uh, solution, enjoys ample consensus in the Polish society. So, if you see an attempt of a foreign government to intervene and to meddle in the uh, legislative process in the Polish parliament, and if you take into consideration this ample support on the part of the Polish society, it is something, and I will quote here the president of the Polish parliament, Mrs. Elżbieta Witek, who said it is unacceptable for but many reasons. you understand this law does directly affect, for, for example, many Israelis uh, Ju of, of Polish Jewish descent. So there is an interest here. It does affect uh, Jewish families and the descendants of the Holocaust survivors. No doubt about that. But if we don't forget the historical context, we can get a little bit uh, confused. Uh, you have to remember that after the war, Warsaw, because we are talking mostly about all those pending cases in the Polish capital, Warsaw was devastated. It didn't exist, actually. So when we talk about property, we are not talking about houses and apartments and palaces. We are talking about bricks, actually. The city did not exist. Poland was devastated in its entirety under German occupation. Uh, millions of families were expatriated from the eastern part of Poland, in that period uh, part of the Soviet Union. Uh, many of them did not receive any compensation. Poland, after the war, did not receive any compensation from Germany, right. which was the source uh, uh, Mr. of Mr. that Mr. calamity. Uh, that, well, everything you're saying is true, could apply, I would say, it's to... true, and that historical context is very but, important. Uh, it could apply to other countries, yet Poland is the only Eastern European country that didn't, hasn't passed a national law addressing the question of restitution or in the European Union. Why, why not? I, no, one is, no one wants to see Polish families kicked out of homes. They've been in there for decades. There are many other alternative solutions, a, a general fund, even something symbolic. Why is Poland unique in this regard? Before the war, the Jewish community in Poland was the largest in Europe, 3 million and 300 uh, uh, Polish citizens of Jewish descent, uh, 90, more than 90 percent 
uh, perished, were exterminated by the German um, occupiers. Uh, so the very amount of property we are talking about is immense. Uh, we have been dealing with these problems since 1989. Since 1999, not since 1945. Why? Because we were not an independent country. Isn't, but on that Another logic, important putting a 30-year time limit is, is, that's one of the reasons arguing against a 30-year time limit. These issues were not addressed until... Uh, Statute of limitations is a term and a regulation and a solution which exists which exists in, in all legal systems all over the world, in every country, also in Israel and also in the United States. The problem is that uh, when you take also into account the fact that uh, uh, for many years since the transformation, uh, there was uh, an ambience of corruption on the real estate market, mainly in Warsaw. Uh, fraud, abuse, predatory practices, and the Polish state not only the government, not only the, not only the constitutional tribunal, but the Polish state as such, um, faced a dilemma. What to do and what, uh, which solution to choose in order to protect and to guarantee the rights of the former owners, of all those people, not only of Jewish uh, origin, who lost their property during the war and after the war, but also of the current proprietors, the current owners, and the people who had legally acquired their houses and their apartments in Warsaw in the course of those uh, more than 70 years after the war. Mr. Mr. Mez, as I said, nobody wants to see uh, Polish families removed. There are many different creative solutions to be found. I want to move beyond the specifics of this law and preface my comment that it has to be noted the Polish people suffered tremendously under the Nazi regime. Uh, one could understand the objection to the use of phrases like Polish death camps rather than Nazi death camps. Uh, the number of righteous Gentiles was is, uh, Poland boasts the highest number of righteous Gentiles that saved Jews during the war. But there is a feeling, certainly here and in much of the Jewish world, that in recent years, the current Polish government is going too far in the direction of trying to suppress any narrative of Polish complicity, individuals, not we're talking about a state, there was no state, during the Holocaust. Uh, uh, there was the law regarding uh, uh, education. Uh, again, I won't go into specifics. But how do you respond to people who have that feeling? Well, thank you very much for bringing up all those important facts uh, in our common Polish-Jewish um, history. Uh, on the other hand, I, I can uh, enter a discussion about what the Polish government, the current Polish government, has been doing in this particular field over the last uh, six years. I can't agree with you when you say that uh, the Polish government is trying to suppress the narrative or a dialogue or a conversation or a discussion about the Holocaust, about what happened on Polish soil uh, under German occupation between 39 and 45. I have no reservations and I have no doubts here in Israel when I have to talk about what happened in Ivabna, when I have to talk about the pogroms, when I have to talk about the anti-Semitism before the war, during the war and after the war in my own country. We are not suppressing any narrative. We are not suppressing uh, an open debate, an open conversation about Polish-Jewish relations. The relations is just a perception and I believe that some of the remarks that we have heard over the last few weeks about this law and about the relationship between Poland and Israel do not help develop uh, these relations in many other fields. Since, since you raised that, let me ask you, do you we, the previous government under Benjamin Netanyahu uh, made a great effort uh, to develop relations between Israel and Poland to some uh, domestic criticism here. Uh, in light of your comment, do you think the cu current government is in danger of, uh, uh, or you do accuse the current government of taking those relations for granted and not handling them in the correct manner? I, I, I would never accuse the Israeli government of for, for taking measures deliberately in order to uh, to um, make the situation and the relationship between Poland and Israel worse than it is now. I um, can't deny that we are in the middle of a crisis, a diplomatic one, fortunately, only a diplomatic one, but we are trying as an as embassy and um, as diplomats, we are trying to develop these relations also in many other fields. We uh, tend to forget that uh, the relations between two countries are not based only on, on uh, political um, contacts between uh, governments and senior officials. As I said, we are uh, trying to develop uh, very intensely our relationship in the field of education, in the field of culture, in the field of 
of economic cooperation. This is also very important. I believe we will be able to overcome this crisis. Uh, unfortunately, it does not depend only on us. We are Mr. trying to. Mr. Mr. I do have to take issue with you referring it to only as a diplomatic crisis. You understand there are many people, and it may even be Foreign Minister Yair Lapid, who is the son of a Holocaust survivor, that don't see this simply as a diplomatic or even political issue, but do see it as a, in a sense, a, a moral issue. No, I'm just, I'm just wanted to stress the fact that we are. Uh, trying to talk directly to the Israeli society. And I think that uh, they, the, uh, those teenagers that I mentioned right. they understand very well the importance, the significance of our relations, also in the foreseeable future. Uh, I, um, I'm, I, I'm not going to say that uh, the diplomatic or political relations between our governments are completely unimportant. They are. Right. They are crucial indeed. But uh, as I said, there are many fields, and I believe that we can maintain these... Uh, good uh, and fruitful relations between Poland and Israel, not only in the political sphere. We have been supporting Israel for many years, actually since we uh, renewed our diplomatic relations in 1990. We have been supporting this country in many international organizations. We have been supporting Israel also in its um, aspirations, in its uh, fight against terrorism, the uh, cooperation between uh, our militaries between our secret services have been thriving over the last three decades. I do believe that we can maintain the same level of, co of cooperation between Poland and Israel in spite of uh, this ongoing crisis and uh, maybe even many more crises that we'll have to overcome in the future. The common history is important, you, uh, is inescapable, uh, but we cannot base our bilateral relationship only on history. When we talk about Polish-Jewish relations, and this is one of the problems I have been dealing with here in Israel, for many young Israelis, these relations are limited to, the, uh, to that, to that uh, uh, tragic period of the six years of the Holocaust. But we can't forget that Poles and Jews have coexisted on Polish soil for more than 900 years. This history is much more complex, much richer, much more abundant. Right. And uh, we, can't re we can't forget it. Okay. Uh, uh, Polish Ambassador to Israel, Mark Magierowski, thank you for joining us on i24 News.